Hi, it's John Edwards, Costa Mesa R&D. Today we have a little Subaru head on the workbench here and we're going to be taking this apart to do a valve job. And this is actually going uh, part and parcel with a an article I'm writing for Sand Sports Magazine on how to do a valve job on the Subaru. So follow along as we do the steps that we need to do. This is an earlier Subaru head and I can tell that by the type of lifters that it has in it. The early heads had a lifter where the shim was on top of the bucket and you would take and blow air into this little passageway right here and that would pop this shim out and you could make your valve adjustment by changing the thickness of the shims. Well, what's happening, happening on the more recent editions of Subaru is they're actually making the lifter itself adjustable. So every time you want to adjust the valves, you have to buy a new lifter to do that. A little more expensive in my estimation, but it sure, certainly is a, a better solution because what we would occasionally have happen is that higher RPMs, these shims would actually spit themselves out. And then it causes all kinds of problems. So the later style is a much better solution. Another thing you want to look at when you're doing these Subaru is when you're taking them off, you have to remove the cams from the head to get the uh, head off the engine. And you want to make sure and look at the little numbers down in here. Uh, this one says 2EHZ. This one over here says 2IHZ. So that means that these row of caps on this side are on the intake side. This row here are on the exhaust side. There's also a little arrow that needs to face forward on the head. And you can tell if a set of caps go with a certain head because the head will have the same letters down here, H, Z. Sometimes we'll see them here, sometimes we'll see them up here. They'll be someplace on the head. You may have to look for them. But this is important, especially if you're going down to the boneyard to get a head and they're giving you a head of unknown origin. And you always want to make sure that the caps go along with the head. Well the Subaru kind of presents us with a special problem because all of the valves are down in these little lifter bores here, or wells, and we can't use a traditional C-clamp style tool to remove them. So what we have is we have a power tool, and let's see if we can get this to work. Get the keepers out of here. And then we can remove the retainer and the spring. Once all the springs and everything are removed, then it's going to be time to remove the seals. And it takes a special pair of pliers to do that. Now make sure that you note what color the seals are so that you can put the appropriate seal back on the correct valve. Typically on this motor here, we're going to have brown seals on the exhaust, and we're going to have a set of black seals on the intake. But that has changed throughout the years. Well, here's the business side of the cylinder head. And as you can see, we have one valve that is badly burned. And this was actually caused by insufficient valve lash and it caused the valve to stay open and uh, eventually what will happen is it will cause the valve to burn quite badly. We're going to show you a modification that we do here at Costa Mesa R&D and that's to cloverleaf this thing a little bit more than what it is and that will be to open up this material around the valves and we found that on the full bench we get these things up to anywhere from about 2 or 3 CFM all the way up to about 16 CFM additional flow at full valve lift just with that one modification. That's a real sweet modification to do and it's a good bang for the buck. One of the other things that we try to do is to measure the stem height as it sticks out from the cylinder head and we record these values so that we can cut the valves to the same length when we reinstall them and this makes valve adjustment much simpler. One more thing to keep things in order here is to use a valve rack to keep the valves in the position that they were removed from the head. The next uh, thing is to clean the valves and we'll do that on a wire wheel. Well 
Well, we've come over here to the valve grinder, and what we're going to be doing is setting up the work head to 45 degrees, which is what our valve angle is set at on the valves. Lock this down. And once we get that set, then we can go ahead and grind our valves. We've been experimenting around with some 55 degree valve seat angles and boy I tell you they sure have been producing some spectacular results. Now we're going to go ahead and grind the valve. And this valve grinder is a bit different than most because it uses a V-block to position the valve instead of a chuck that can actually run out of round. That was sounded like it was a little bit warped. Now we'll inspect for any faults that may still remain. And this valve is looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do the rest of the valves now. Now that I've got the intakes done, I'm going to go ahead and move to the exhaust. You only remove just enough material to clean the valve up. The valve margin, you want to have that at least two-thirds of new. One of the things I really like about this valve grinder is that it'll hold four ten thousandths concentricity, which is like less than one-tenth the thickness of a hair. Our margin is good. The valve face is real nice. This exhaust valve is warped, as you can kind of see. It ground some parts of the face and other parts are not ground. But I think we can save this with a little more grinding. Our next step is to give the head a wash in the uh, Turkish bath here. All right, it's been about a half hour, so we'll shut this down. And wash this off with some water. this over and do the rest of the machine work. Our next task is to pressure test the head now that it's clean and we pressured this up to 50 psi and it's holding just fine. We're going to take the spark plugs out now because it's much easier to do it here than it is on the bench. The head's all nailed down. I'm going to use a wire brush to clean up the ports. And I'll also clean up the ports.